Welcome. Before we work on the problem at hand, I want to consider possible outcomes of the scenario that we're considering. We're given two masses, M1 and M2. M2 is denoted by a capital M, but that doesn't necessarily mean that its mass is larger. M2 is initially at rest. So what could happen if we have M1 colliding with M2? Well, we could have M1 stopping and M2 continuing on in the same direction. We could also have M1 and M2 each moving in the same direction. Notice they're not coupled. This is an elastic collision, not an inelastic one. The same happens, what if, uh, if mass 1 were the larger mass? We see that scenario again. Now what if there's a third possibility which is that M1 and M2 move in opposite directions after the collision, like that. So these are scenarios that we'll need to consider as we consider the problem at hand. I'm Dr. Courtney. In this problem, we have an elastic collision between two masses. That means that momentum is conserved as long as there are no external forces acting on the system, which is true, and kinetic energy is also conserved. We'll need both of these, otherwise we end up with too many unknowns. We need a system of equations to solve. We're told that this is a one-dimensional collision, so we will not have to consider vector components in this particular problem. What we are going to do is use equations describing what I just told you. Namely, that momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. We're given that um, the second mass is at rest, initially, and the final speeds of both masses are the same. And we're asked to find a relationship between the masses. So we'll be looking for either m1 over m2 or m2 over m1, depending on which seems algebraically to make the most sense at the time. So as we develop this problem, what do we have? Initially, We have a mass, we'll call it M1, and that's designated simply by a lowercase m. It has an initial velocity, V1 initial, we'll say that that's headed toward the right. We'll call that our positive direction. Mass 2, we don't know its relative size, so I'm just designating it here, just guessing. It's designated by capital M, and we're told that its initial velocity is zero. So, one of the scenarios we considered with the marbles is that the first mass came to rest while the second mass continued forward with some final velocity. But since we're told that both masses in this problem had the same final speed, that is not one that we'll consider. So, what we're left with then is that what if we have mass A, or mass 1, I'm sorry, and it is going to have a V1 final continuing on in the same direction, and mass 2 no longer has a zero speed, but it has also some final speed in the same direction, and they are equal. So in this case, we have V1 final equals V2 final, which we could just call V final. Another scenario is that mass 1 
now has a final velocity in the opposite direction, while mass 2 continues on with a final velocity in what we've designated as the positive direction. So what about this scenario? If they have the same speed, we can then say that v1 final is equal to negative v final, while v2 final would be designated by a positive v final number. So this makes a difference in what we would substitute into our momentum and kinetic energy equations. So as we figure out then a plan for evaluating this problem, what we're going to do is, first of all, uh, equate initial and final momenta and then we're going to equate initial and final kinetic energies and then for each outcome We'll substitute values, or substitute symbols, because that's all we have, and then um, and solve it for either m1 over m2 or m2 over m1, again, depending on which seems more appropriate at the time. I'm going to summarize what we've done so far, and then we'll move on with evaluating the problem. And I'm back. I've made some notations on the board here just reminding us what the conditions are for the two potential outcomes. As we evaluate the problem then, we're first going to equate the momenta. So we have mass 1 times its initial velocity plus mass 2 times its initial velocity equals mass 1 times its final velocity plus mass 2 times its final velocity. Remember that mass 2 was initially at rest, and so this term is zero. We can divide through by mass one to get that the initial speed of mass one equals m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final over mass one. We'll leave it there for the moment as we move on to expressing that the kinetic energies are also conserved. One half mass one times its initial velocity squared times half mass 2 times its initial velocity squared will be equal to 1 half mass 1 times its final velocity squared plus 1 half mass 2 times its final velocity squared. Now again, the initial speed of mass 2 is 0, so that term goes to 0. We also see that the coefficients of 1 half appear in each term, so those also cancel out. And we can simplify this expression then as uh, v1, the initial speed of v1 squared equals 1 over mass 1 times m1 v1 final squared plus m2 v2 final squared. So let's look at outcome A. We'll call that 3A. So then we have um, v1 initial is equal to little m plus big M over little m times just v final. And from our conservation of kinetic energy, we have that this initial speed squared equals 1 over little m times little m plus big M times v final squared. We have these two expressions and we can substitute for the initial speed of v1 into our second equation. So completing this substitution, we have the sum of the masses over the first mass times v final squared equals the sum of the masses over the first mass times v final squared. Now in this case, the coefficient is squared, and in, on the right-hand side, it is not. In order for those to be equal, we have to have uh, that these two coefficients are also the equal. If you can reason that through, that either means that it has to be equal to 1, 
the sum of the masses divided by the initial mass is 1 or 0. If it's 0, then the masses are 0 and we don't have masses and that doesn't really apply to a realistic problem. If the sum of the masses is equal to 1, that basically implies since the first mass divided by the first mass is 1, it implies that this is the limit as um, m is very large compared to the second mass. Uh, I should say very large. Now let's consider the second possible outcome where the two blocks are traveling in opposite directions after the elastic collision. So if we substitute in our expression for conservation of momentum, we find that little m times minus v final plus big M times v final over little m. And so we can simplify that, minus m plus big M over little m times v final. And if we make similar substitutions into our expression for conservation of kinetic energy, the square of the initial speed of mass 1 equals 1 over little m. We have a little m. This time we have minus v final, but it's squared, so that negative is going to go away. And so our expression doesn't end up being as similar. And so we have little m plus big M over little m times v final squared. And once again, we're going to substitute this expression for the initial speed of v1 into uh, the expression we get from conservation of kinetic energy. And we find minus little m plus big M over little m times v final quantity squared equals little m plus big M over little m times v final squared. There's a little bit of algebra involved here, which for time's sake I will leave to you. But once we simplify, we find then that um, you can get m, big M over little m, times big M over little m minus 3 equals 0. So you end up with a quadratic equation, which once you factor it, you get these two factors. And so again, you get one result that either that's 0 or the ratio of the masses is 3. So as we assess this problem, how can we figure out whether we have this as a possible answer, we have uh, otherwise the first mass is just almost infinitely larger than the second mass as our possible answer. For this answer, we can substitute back into our expressions for conservation of momentum and conservation of kinetic energy and confirm that we get the same answer out of this mass ratio. And indeed that does work out. So I'm just going to write here, uh, we're going to substitute for V1 final, V2 final, M1 and M2 in equations 1 and 2 and verify that they are equivalent. So once we do that, we can feel more confident that the answer that we've come up with here is correct.